Hey, hey, I'm Crystal McConico, and thank you for joining us for 21 days of prayer and fasting. Today, we'll be talking about what it looks like to receive forgiveness from God and having forgiveness for others. At some point in life, we've all either had situations where we've done wrong and desire to be forgiven, or maybe, unfortunately, someone has hurt you and is asking for your forgiveness. Either way, either way, we have to look deeply within ourselves to be able to walk that process out. And that, my friends, is not always the easiest thing to do, I can attest. However, God never promised us a life without tragedy, ease, or, or hardship. He promised us His peace. God promised us forgiveness. In the Bible, the stories and scriptures on forgiveness, they're plentiful. And I've used these stories as a guide in my own process of forgiveness. Let's take the prodigal son, Luke chapter 15. In this chapter, Jesus talks about a forgiving father and two sons, one son lost in the world in need of forgiveness, and then the other son lost in unforgiveness towards the family. Well. The son that was lost in the world, he was lost because he asked for his inheritance early and spent every dime of it until he had nothing left. In verse 17, it tells us, then the son came to his senses. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he got up and came to his father. And while he was still a long way off, the father said to him, the father felt compassion for him. He kissed him and embraced him. Then the father said to the servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him, put a ring on his hand, put sandals on his feet, bring the fattened calf and let's celebrate for this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and now he's found. That, that beautiful picture of the father waiting for his son to come home. The father never took a moment to air off frustrations and all the pain caused by the son's distance and actions. But at the very moment he saw his son coming, the father was filled with compassion. He embraced his son, he blesses him. He chooses to forgive. Now, all while this is happening, the, the other son finds himself conflicted with bitterness that his father rolled out the red carpet for his brother who's been gallivanting and, and carrying on o over in foreign lands. He was the son who faithfully stayed at his father's side. He worked, never neglecting a command. So how could the father welcome a son back so easily? And I think at, at this point in the parable, it was meant for us to search our own hearts. How often do we withhold forgiveness, measure our own good with someone else's wrongdoing, or turn cold-hearted and distant because we disagree with a loved one? Why, why do we do that? Why is it so hard to forgive? Maybe it's because we've become too quick to act on logic and emotion rather than, than pausing to remember what is true and choosing the mercy and the grace of our Heavenly Father. It's, it's in verse 31 that the Father reminds the more bitter son of the truth, son, you have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. And then the father makes the conscious decision. He's leading the son and the family by choosing to rejoice over the prodigal son. We will celebrate and rejoice for your brother. He was lost and now he's found. Now, now the parable, the parable, we don't know if the brother forgave or if he leaned more into the bitterness, but, but man, the prodigal son and his vulnerability and the father and his willingness to forgive, I, I, I think it all speaks to the many times we've fallen short and we need forgiveness and love. God welcomes us with open arms despite our mess ups. And then he blessed us with a savior, Jesus Christ, so that we can walk in forgiveness for eternity. And in 21 days of prayer, I believe we, we have to choose to forgive just as God forgave us, that we won't be like the bitter brother and be slow to forgive. It's my prayer that we won't dwell on faults, but we would allow love to prosper by choosing to forgive. That even when we don't feel like forgiving, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we'll remember our position as a daughter. We'll remember our position as a son and how He so graciously forgave you and me so that we can forgive others. L let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. Convict us right now and help our hearts to be more tender and more compassionate towards other, others. Remove the scales off of our eyes so that we can walk gracefully in this process of forgiveness, Lord God. We thank you right now that your word says that you promised us peace in the midst of the storm, Lord God. So thank you right now that we are choosing to be people who are forgiving, people who are loving, and on the other side of that action, on the other side of that decision, we will be free and victorious. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen.